Hello. Good evening. My name is Jason. My call sign is uh, Kilo Charlie 5 Hotel Whiskey Bravo. And this is Ham Radio 2.0 live from the Ham Shack. In uh, today's discussion, or today's presentation, I should say, we will be unboxing the Connect Systems CS800 UHF DMR mobile radio. This is a 45 watt mobile radio. Uh, most of you who are interested or have been involved in DMR over the last couple years in amateur radio have either acquired or heard about the Connect System CS700 HT. This is the mobile radio version of that rate of that HT. Um, I first heard about this radio back in probably early 2014. They said that they were going to release a mobile version and when I went to the Dayton Hamvention uh, in 2014 which was in May I think it's May um, they said that uh, they would be I, I signed up for a pre-order didn't have to pay any money but I uh, put my name on a pre-order list in May of 2014 for an October of 2014 release uh, well that never happened uh, the radios just released uh, this week uh, this video is being recorded the first week of June 2015 uh, after Dayton Hamvention of 2015, which was last month in May, and but they're but they're here now. Uh, I received them in the mail today. Uh, ordered some. Uh, I've had some on order for a while, but uh, I talked to Connect Systems this week, and they shipped me a, a case of them uh, earlier in the week, and they arrived at my doorstep um, this morning. So very interested to see what this radio does. Uh, very, uh, very been looking forward to it for a long time. I think it's going to be a good radio for uh, for the price point and for the power output for DMR. I think you're going to have a lot of takers on it. So um, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and unbox it and see what uh, see what we've got. All right, here is the unboxing of the Connect Systems CS800 UHF DMR mobile radio. I just got these in the mail today. Uh, Connect Systems released them sometime this week. Um, I was told that they did a firmware update on all of them before they shipped them out. So they should be the latest firmware as of basically as of like June 4th, June 5th, 2015. This video is being recorded on June 6th. So we're going to unbox this thing real quick. I've actually already unboxed it. I put it all back together the way it came. So I want everybody to see it. This right here, of course, is your... Uh, this is, it comes with two programming cables. I thought that was interesting. Well, let me rephrase. There's two co programming cables available for it, but they charge extra. Uh, they charge $15 per programming cable. This one has an RJ11 connector with a USB that can be plugged into the microphone port. Of course, you've got your power cable here. And you've got uh, your DTMF microphone here. And you've got your... There's a uh, mobile mounting bracket in there. So we've got all that in there, along with the cable. Here in a little bit, we'll plug this thing up and power it on and see how it works. The second programming cable it comes with is this sucker with a freaking serial port on the back of it. Go figure. It's got a USB on to go into your computer, but it's got a serial port which goes on the back of the radio. So that's, uh, I don't know, whatever, I guess. You know, the, uh, the BFDX MT7250s that I sell at my website, grapevineamateurradio.com, <laughs> they've got a ribbon cable that go on the back of them, so I guess I've seen stranger things. This is actually the manual, unlike the CS750 that came with the CS700 manual. This one actually says CS800 on it, so we're good there. I haven't really opened up the manual, taken a look through it yet. But like I said, I just got these in, they're brand new. This is the radio, of course. Uh, let's see if we can get this a little bit focused here. There we go. Um, it's got some protective covering on the face there. Uh, four programmable buttons, P1, 2, 3, and 4, power button, and your up, down, which uh, should be your volume. And then this little selector knob here, I believe, is channels. I think, I was looking through the software, and it seems like maybe even these two are programmable. Or at least this one is. You can switch it 
between channel up down or volume up down and uh, so I haven't plugged it up yet but that is the uh, that's what it looks like front facing speaker um, very Motorola-esque kind of uh, kind of neat here's something I thought was strange strange but kind of neat type in female connector on the back uh, so don't expect to be able to buy this radio and put it into your standard uh, coax or you know mount it in your car or something because uh, this thing has a type in connector you're going to need a, either an adapter which you'll get some loss with an adapter from type in to pl259 or you just need a coax with the type in connector here's your uh here's your serial port in the back that um for the for the cable that we saw a second ago um standard t connector on the power cable there this uh has a speaker in the back standard speaker connector nothing special there and inline an inline 15 amp fuse so that uh that tells you what that is there uh let's see we've got the model number 400 to 470 megahertz and uh, the FCC ID on the back and uh, at the time of the shipment this radio is not FCC part 90 approved and may only be used in the uh, radio amateur bands that's what's printed right here you may not be able to see it very well but uh, it has uh, made in China their uh, website connectsystems.com that kind of thing uh, this is cool I've not seen any other DMR mobile radios with this feature detachable face push that push that lever there slide the face over looks very much like a Yezu here face comes off remote mountable it's got a RJ 45 actually that looks more like an yeah that's an RJ 11 RJ 11 here RJ 11 there they sell a separation kit for the radio it does not come with it I think the separation kits are around 30 bucks. I'll have to verify that. I don't know. I only got, I got one separation kit. I got 10 radios and one separation kit. I just wanted to test it out really. But I'm going to get more of those as time goes on as uh, my next shipment probably. So that's uh, that is that. Um, of course that's where the microphone goes. So there you have it. The CS800. Uh, let's go ahead and power it up and see uh, see what it looks like. So what I did here was program a short and sweet code plug into here. I programmed the uh, uh, my my subscriber ID and the radio name and just a couple of talk groups on one repeater out here in the the Dallas area where I'm at. So what we're going to do is power it on. And if you'll notice, if you don't hold the power button down, it kind of blips, but it never comes on. So hold it down. Now those two lines that you see right there are both programmable in the software. You've got a top line and a bottom line. And uh, so I was wrong about that. This uh, this left knob over here is the radio volume. These buttons here are the channel. And of course these four down at the bottom, those are programmable with your power button there, of course. This has a clicker to it. It's it's kind of like a, a notched uh, variable resistor instead of just being solid or smooth turning. So I thought it was volume, but it's not. Or I thought it was a, a channel selector, but it's not. It's volume. So you can see here. Um, I think that's your. Uh, this is just channel two. This is just the default programming here. Channel three, channel two. So you can very, very similar to the CS seven hundred, the CS uh, seven fifty. In fact, it's the same exact software as the CS seven fifty. Channel one. So when you shoot the uh, I, one thing I noticed when I was shooting the the code plug into it is that the radio will come on and say radio program here let me just do it real quick I'll uh, I'll just write this code plug over again it, radio uh, you click OK you click right and you click OK on the software you see it says program mode writing and it goes through you can't see my computer screen right now but it's going through the transferring data the status bar from 0 to 100 percent 
and then it comes up on the software and it says successful please wait for radio to reset and you see on the radio it says radio restart and then it will power down like so and I didn't wait I waited a few seconds but I didn't wait very long but it never did come back on it kind of concerned me at first but really it's just probably a firmware glitch because you can power it back on manually and it comes back up fine and it's got your channel uh, one channel two it's got your channel one program in it it only has you know it's got two lines two it's got two lines in the software for power on that's when you see it powered on it had my call sign up top and ham radio 2.0 on the second line but when you're going through the menu, I only see the one line. It's got the top line here is that the H is your high power, uh, the lock is your unlock, or it's got an unlock uh, symbol right there. It means your keypad's not locked on your microphone, and then of course the the talk group name there. It'd be it'd be a lot cooler, like some of the other brands of radios, if it had like the zone name at the top and the talk group name at the bottom. But anyway, it's it's pretty good. Okay, so you got uh, got the first look at the Connect System CS800 radio. This is the the user manual that I uh, mentioned a moment ago. Um, according to the on the very back page, it says that uh, the power the radio specifications of this unit are of course 13.8 uh, volt DC. It'll do uh, 400 to 470 megahertz. Now, this is the CS800. They have a CS801, which is a VHF model. I don't have any of those right now. I believe they're still out. I believe they were released at the same time as the CS800, but there's not any VHF DMR repeaters in my area. I sell some VHF DMR equipment on my, my website, uh, grapevineamateurradio.com, which you saw a moment ago. Um, don't get much call for them, but I do get people calling me saying, hey, do you have this model, whatever, in, in VHF? So I'll be getting some CS801s probably in my next shipment. But for now, we're just going to talk about the UHF version. Um, 400 and 470 megahertz, 1,000 channels, 250 zones, and 16 channels per zone. And um, it does, of course, a 12.5 kilohertz channel spacing for, uh, for DMR configuration. According to this... This radio does 25 watts on low power and 45 watts on high power for the UHF model. The VHF model actually does 50 watts on high power. So that's that's pretty standard, it's pretty good. For DMR, that's excellent. Because you know a lot of your a lot of your analog radios that are dual band will do 50 watts on VHF and 35 watts on UHF. So 45 watts on UHF is pretty good, but for DMR. Uh, the BFDX uh, MT7250 mobile radio, which I have on my website right now, and I've actually sold quite a few of those, is a 25 watt. It's about the same size as this Connect Systems. It's a 25 watt mobile, and it works very well uh, for a for a mobile radio running in my truck with an external antenna. I usually run a Comet SBB2, which is a little like uh, 16, 15, 16 inch antenna. And uh, it does, I have no issues in the Dallas-Fort Worth area with, uh, with 25 watts on DMR. So 45 watts on DMR. Uh, now, I wasn't able to test that today. That's something else I, I didn't bring up yet. Um, as I showed you earlier, the radio has a Type-N connector on the back. So you're going to have to plan for that. I don't have any Type-N uh, co. I, I've got some Type-N coax, but I don't have any Type-N coax and antennas right now. So what I'm going to do for demonstration purposes is get me a couple of uh, uh, Type-N mail to uh, SO239 connectors so that I can just hook up one of my external antennas here on the shack and do some testing on that. So look for that later. I'll probably do a testing session of that will conglomerate um, the, the Connect Systems mobile radio and the BFDX mobile radio and maybe another um, DMR radio, maybe another DMR radio that I have. Uh, Puxing is supposed to be coming out with a DMR mobile radio very soon. Uh, looking very forward to that. Their HTs were very, very promising, which just recently also uh, uh, received FCC approval, so that's a good thing. Anyway, kind of on a tangent there. 45 watts on UHF is very good in the first place, and of course it'll do that on analog as well. Uh, but on DMR, that's going to be excellent. So, 
Everything else in here looks pretty standard. You can read through the book. Again, like I said, this is actually says Connect System CS800. It's not a copy, or it's not just a CS700 book the way that the 750 comes with. So, and it's it's all done very well in English, so you don't have to worry about any of the lost in translation situations the way you do on some of the other Chinese radios. So, Anyway, that is the Connect System CS800. Uh, looking very forward to this one. This was the unboxing session. I will do another session uh, once I get in on the air and do some uh, do some testing with it. But uh, you guys have a good evening. Thanks for watching. Uh, go subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, Ham Radio 2.0 is the YouTube channel. Uh, check out my website www.grapevineamateurradio.com. And if you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email or comment on the video. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot in 73.